Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Let's quiet ourselves, center ourselves. Start with our feet planted on the floor, hands in my lap. Take some slow, deep breaths. Listen to your breath in and slowly out. Breathing in love and breathing out our worries for the week. Breathing in hope, breathing out worry, breathing in excitement, and breathing out fear. Take a moment to think about what's inside of you. What feelings do you have that you can set aside right now? What emotions that you could set aside right now and be very truly present here. To soften our hearts. Find that true peaceful spirit that is inside of you, that is the real and true you. Breathe in very slow and deeply, you feel that true presence, that relaxed and peaceful spirit within you. Knowing that all is well. Things are always working out for you. God is always with you, supporting you, helping you. good and bad. Let's keep that peaceful, relaxed feeling, that openness as we prepare for our Mass today. Amen. as you are able, and we will sing Gather Us In.
Welcome to all of you as you get, we gather together as a parish family, as a body of Christ, to celebrate God's immense love for us. We remind ourselves of that love by signing ourselves with the sign of our faith, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. As we come together to allow ourselves to be touched by God's love, we pause for moments and reflect on our own lives to maybe define those times when we just take things for granted or we don't really think about how God is working in our lives. We ask just God to just to infuse us with his mercy, his presence, and his love. Lord Jesus Christ, you came to show us a new way of living. Lord, thank you for your mercy. Christ Jesus, through your life and your teaching, you have taught us always to seek the good for you, for God, and for one another. Christ Jesus, thank you for your mercy. And Lord Jesus Christ, you have given us the gift of the Holy Spirit that we might live forever in your presence. Lord Jesus, thank you for your mercy. And may Almighty God continue to have mercy on us, forgiving us our sins, and bringing us all to life everlasting. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not upon our failings, but upon the faith of your church, and grant to us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live forever and ever. And may that peace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with each one of you. And again, being socially responsible, we wish everyone a sign of peace. And united in heart and spirit, let us join together in giving praise to God.
Almighty God, our Father, we come together to celebrate and to worship you, to give you thanks for all that you have given us. Let your spirit truly be a part of our hearts, that our spirit, our worship, may be truth, and it may be feeling for you and for us. We pray that you continue to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ, your Son, who is, lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning, all. The first reading this morning is from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Now, Israel, hear the statutes and decrees which I am teaching you to observe, that you may live and may enter in and take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. In your observance of the commandments of the Lord, your God, which I enjourn upon you, you shall not add to what I command you, nor subtract from it. Observe them carefully, for thus will give you evidence of your wisdom and intelligence to the nations who will hear of all these statues and say, This great nation is truly a wise and intelligent people. For what great nation is there that has God so close to it as the Lord our God is to us? Whenever we call upon him, or what a great nation has statutes and decrees that are as just as this whole law, which I am setting before you today. This is the word of the Lord. Softly spoken.
Today's second reading is from the letter of St. James. Dearest brothers and sisters, all good giving and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no alteration or shadow caused by change. He willed to give us by birth the word of truth, that we may be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. Humbly welcome the word that has been <coughs> planted in you and is able to save your souls. Be doers of the word and not hearers only, deluding yourselves. Religion is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their afflictions and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Mark. When the Pharisees, with some scribes who had come from Jerusalem, gathered around Jesus, they observed that some of his disciples ate their meals with unclean, that is, unwashed hands. For the Pharisees, and in fact all the Jews, do not eat without carefully washing their hands, keeping the tradition of the elders. And on coming from the marketplace, they do not eat without purifying themselves. And there are many other things that they have traditionally observed, the purification of cups and jugs and kettles and beds. So the Pharisees and scribes questioned him, why do your disciples not follow the tradition of the elders, but instead eat a meal with unclean hands? He responded, well, did Isaiah... Well, did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In rain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines human pro per precepts. You disregard God's commandment, but cling to human tradition. He summoned the crowd again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that enters one from outside can defile that person, but the things that come out from within are what defiles. From within people, from within people, from their hearts come evil thoughts, unchastity, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, licentiousness, envy, blasphemy, arrogance, folly. All these evils come from within and they defile. My sisters and brothers, this is the gospel of our Lord. Many years ago, I worked up in South Dakota, worked at a call center, and I had one day, I had my evaluation. And so one of the questions that my supervisor asked me is, 
how do you handle change? Do you fight it or do you go with it? And I looked at her and said, I cause it. <laughs> some of you have experienced that here, some with warning and some without warning. <laughs> I just do things. But it's good every now and then to get things to shake up just a little bit to kind of get us thinking. You know, last week we talked about how a lot of times when we, something happens, we just kind of react by nature or just, we don't really think about what we're doing, we just do something because either that's what we've done in the past or that's what we're trained. Well, when those reactions become codified, we give them a new word. We call them traditions. And there's a lot of things that we do because they're traditions. And we really don't know why we do them, we just do them because that's what we've always done and that's what we were taught to do and what we were told to do. And those traditions sometimes become very, very hard to adapt or to change or to let go of. There's a lot of things that we still do in the church that really don't have any practical value whatsoever. We just do them because. So for example, we have candles. Now, back in the day, they needed candles so they could see the book to read. We have lights. We don't use candles for illumination. We use them for decorations. But we still keep the candles because that's churchy. And that's what churches have, is candles. I remember when I was first ordained that the big argument back then was communion rails. And that we had members of the church who would tell us that they would not only stop going, but they would stop giving if we even touched their communion rails. Because those were sacred things, and those were, that's what the church was. The Catholic Church was communion rails. And if you take those out, you've destroyed the church. How many times have you heard that about so many things? If you don't do this anymore, you will destroy whatever. It happens in the church, it happens in politics, it even happens in family circles. That we get so tied to our traditions that the traditions themselves become more important than why we did them. They take on a life of their own and the value just kind of drifts off someplace. That's what Jesus is talking about in today's gospel. There's all these people washing your hands and you don't understand why you're doing it. You're just doing it because that's what the elders do. That your actions are empty because they have no meaning. They're just actions that you do. You know, for us clergy, the priests, we wash our hands at the offertory. You know, a symbolic washing of the hands. Well, the reason we did that is, again, back in the past, the priests used to accept the offering from the people, which was usually vegetables and chickens and things like that. I'm not going to touch the bread after that. I, I need to go wash my hands. But now we still do that. But why? And so now we do it because we have germs out here, so we're doing it to keep everyone safe. So we're doing the same thing with different substances, but a new meaning. And that's what is really important. And I, I love it. I'm going to take a little bit of credit for it, but only a little bit. Several years ago, I issued a challenge to a certain member of this church that if they wanted to pray the rosary, that maybe they had to do it in a way that would give new meaning. And she ran with it. And really have taken this rosary and just say, this is a beautiful prayer that so many people just do because they don't even think about it. But really what it is, it's to get you to think. It is to occupy your mind so that you, so that you can think about God and be present with God. All of these things that we do, these rituals that we have, can be very beautiful and very powerful when we realize it's not the ritual that's important. It's the why. And that's what Jesus really wants us to understand and to focus on the why we do things. That what we do is really not as important as the why we're doing it. You know, th the big thing back then was eating unclean foods. And Jesus is saying, you know, that isn't what makes you unclean. What makes you unclean is what's in yourself. Your own thoughts, your own greed, your own fears, your own guilt, whatever it is that, that, that keeps you from really encountering God, that is what's destroying your spirit. 
not what you eat. Now, I, I will, God will forgive me, I will take exception to some of what Jesus is saying. Because I do think there are things that come from the outside that do, do defile us. And those are the words of other people. That we, when we listen and when we accept their words into our heart, that does defile us, that does damage us, that does hurt us. So we need to be careful that when we listen to things, that we really put them in perspective in saying, is this really the message of love? Is this really consistent with what God has called me to be and who God says that I am? Because again, the only thing that can really defile us is things that we take in. You remember, I remember the, the great saying when I was a kid, maybe it's a tradition, maybe not. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words may never hurt me. Which we all know is kind of false, but also true. The only thing that hurts us is the things that we allow to hurt us. And so Jesus is saying, don't really be afraid of what's out there. Don't be afraid of what people are saying. Worry about what's in your heart. Really take to, to, to mind and to your own awareness what it is that your heart is saying to you, what is coming from you. Because one of the best ways to counter evil in the world is to speak good. One of the best ways to, to get rid of lies is to speak truth. That when we allow ourselves to be loving people and we let our actions and our traditions and everything that we do be a response not to the situation, but a response of love. To really think about what God is calling us to be. What is God calling for me in this situation? How can I truly, in whatever situation I am, bring healing and life and love? How can I speak positive words? And how can I make the actions of my own life have meaning for me? When we come to celebrate the Mass, when we do our private prayers, when we do novenas, or rosaries, or parades, or marches, or anything else that we do in our life that is tradition. How am I internalizing that to make it a reflection of who I am and what I believe? Am I letting my traditions somehow bring my life to a greater meaning? Or am I just going through rote memory? Because that's that's the temptation is just to do things because that's why we do them and so what I do a lot of times is if I don't understand why I do something I make a reason for it you know one of my favorite examples is you know the little book over there says when you read the gospel the person reading the gospel makes the sign of the cross on their forehead their lips and their heart doesn't say why it just that's, that's what you're supposed to do. And so what I do is, Lord, open my mind that I might know your word, my lips that I might proclaim them, my heart that I might live them. I give that tradition, that action, a meaning that is somehow important to me. That would be my challenge to you. As you go through your life and you do your own traditions, if you don't understand why you do them, then figure out and make a reason. Do we keep our balance? That I can tell you in one word. Tradition! 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 Traditions for everything. 
how to sleep, how to eat, how to work. How to wear clothes. For instance, we always keep our heads covered and always wear a little prayer shawl. This shows our constant devotion to God. You may ask, how did this tradition get started? I'll tell you. I don't know. But it's a tradition. And because of our traditions, every one of us knows who he is and what God expects him to do. Day and night must scramble for a living. He and wife and children sing his daily prayers. Who has a right as master of the house to have the final word at home? I'm thinking that, you know, as we look at the events of the world right now, and I'm thinking especially about Afghanistan, about the fear of going back to the way things were, you know, that those things that, that we've always done, you know, that at times are harmful. And we will really look at the own history of our country. The things that we have done have been harmful, and we continue to do them because we don't stop and think. So we want to take a few moments to think about our actions, to think about our world. And we come together in prayer now to ask God to continue to guide us and bless us. Loving God, we ask you to continue to look upon your church, that we might always see the value in what we do, that we might always be a living presence to your people, that we might always speak words of life and love, that we might encourage others to come to the fullness of who you have created them to be. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, we pray for the world in which we live. We remember all those places that are having troubles right now. We know that the, the West is having fires, in the North are having floods. Right now there's a hurricane coming down upon Louisiana. Lord, we just ask you to protect all the people who are being affected by these natural disasters. And we pray that you will give, continue to fill them with hope and that you will continue to move your hearts of your people to the care of our sisters and brothers. For this we pray to the Lord. Of course, we remember all of those who are sick and are suffering. We remember the hungry and the homeless. We remember those in hospitals and nursing homes and in prisons. We remember all of those who are separated from those that they love, from those who feel that they have no one to care for them. Lord, we just pray that you would just let them know of your presence, that you would fill them with the joy of your being, and that you will continue to find help them, to find people to care for them, to move our hearts, we pray to the Lord. And I would invite you to offer your prayers and petitions.
We pray to the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our families and our friends. We are praying for those who have passed on to us our traditions. We pray that they, God, may bless them for their loving actions. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the future of our world, of our generations. We pray that we may continue to grow in knowledge, and as we do so, that we would also continue to grow in wisdom. We pray to the Lord. For all of those who have asked for our prayers, for the people that we promised that we would pray for them, and remembering those people who feel that they have no one to pray for them, we just ask the Lord in love and mercy to hear and answer their prayers. We pray to the Lord. And for all the needs and the desires and the wants that we hold within our own hearts, trusting that God hears us, we pray to the Lord. And loving Father, we come before you as your children to celebrate the life that you have given us, to celebrate all the many blessings you have bestowed upon us, and to give you thanks. We lift up our hearts in gratitude, in trust, and in faith. We ask that you continue to look upon us, to hear our needs, and to answer these prayers which we make known to you in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who is our Lord forever and ever. Amen. And here we are, lifting our hands to you. And here we are, that our God is here with us, filling our hearts with his spirit. So mother and father of life, we come down together as your children, bringing to you all of our hopes and our dreams, our successes and our failures, our acts of love and kindness, and those areas of our life where we are in need of healing. We humbly invite you to be present with us and to us. Let us feel your nearness, raise our awareness of your presence in us and of our presence in you. Today we bring you these simple gifts of bread and wine, the unleavened bread that represents the sacrifices we make in life and the impermanence of this world, and the wine that represents the finer and happy moments. In them we have the fullness of our human experience. And so, great Creator, bless. 
we ask you now to bless these our gifts, that they may become for us the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose invitation we celebrate this Eucharist. And pray with me, my sisters and brothers, that these our gifts may be acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. And may the Lord accept these gifts from our hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all of God's church. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good that we give you thanks and praise Almighty God, everlasting Mother and Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. We have, we have gathered here at this table as a family, a people as diverse as the cosmos, with different callings and different beliefs, different perspectives, different gifts, and all of us are at different places in our own spiritual journey. Yet at this table, we come together as one family in God, a single body of Christ, united in love, with no one greater or less than the other. And so in this sacred unity, we now gather and join with all the angels and saints in proclaiming your glory as we join in that everlasting song of praise. sacred tradition of the Jewish people with the Passover meal. And this Eucharist is for us a very sacred tradition, for we encounter Christ and Christ encounters us. We remember that on the night before Jesus was to give his life for us, he celebrated that Passover meal with his disciples. During the meal, he took the bread and he offered praise and thanks to God in heaven. And so we too praise God as we pray, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. This will become for us the bread of life. And then giving the bread to those at table with him, Jesus said, Take this, all of you, and eat of this, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. At the end of the meal, Jesus then took the cup of thanksgiving, and as tradition called, he gave thanks and praise to God in heaven. And so we too pray, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. It is through your goodness that we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. This will become for us our spiritual drink. And then giving the cup to those that he loved, Jesus said, take this, all of you, and drink from this. For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. This is shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Time for another change. I've always kind of struggled with the acclamation of faith because we're not really proclaiming Christ's death. It's the death, the resurrection, all that. And I've been searching for a word, and last week it came to it. So in proclaiming God's death, we're going to proclaim God's love. No, you mean? Hmm? Well, it is a mystery that he would love us that way. Let us proclaim the mystery of God's love. <laughs>
And we pray that the spirit of life and wholeness and joy that transforms the gifts that we present will transform us as well, that we might be refreshed in our inner being and that we might be empowered to bring mercy, love, and healing to all of those whose lives we touch. We may we share with the world the gift that God has entrusted to us. May we be empowered to give of our very selves. And we ask you also for some small portion of your grace for ourselves. We ask that you see the areas where we are hurting and bring us your divine healing. Here are hopes and visions for ourselves and help us to achieve them. Almighty Mother and Father, please guide and protect all whom you have chosen to be spiritual guides and leaders. Send your spirit upon all of those who suffer with illness and poverty of body and spirit and bring them your healing. Welcome into your kingdom our departed brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of Christ and all the dead whose faith is known to you alone. Give us hearts filled with the fire for justice and compassion. Let us be good examples in all that we do. Lead this world to a more equitable, more loving time that puts care for one another above all else. Continue to fill us with the grace of the Holy Spirit that we might always be united in Christ giving praise to you in all things. Help all your family to come together through the power of love manifested by Jesus. For it is through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Family traditions are always fun. And one of our family traditions is to join together in heart and in mind in praying as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, from every evil, granting us peace in our day. In your mercy, protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. <laughs> Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your mercy and love, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let this bring us health in mind and in body. My sisters and brothers, this is our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, who comes to us that we might know the fullness of life. Happy are we who are invited to this Eucharist. Lord, I was not worthy that you should come to me, but you have said the word, and I have been healed. And may this body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ 
bring all of us to life everlasting. One of our special traditions at the Holy Angels is that everybody is invited to come and to share this gift. Let us pray. Loving Father, we know of your love for us. We know that you continue to call us to the fullness of life. Help us to live in that fullness. Help us to always be aware of your presence and of your calling. Help us to always be aware of the strength that you provide us that we might live as disciples of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Hello from this side. Hi, y'all. Um, any birthdays? I don't, I, don't, I don't think we do, but anyone out there having a birthday? Happy birthday. We hope you have a good one. I uh, want to remind you that directly after Mass, that Deacon Kelly will meet with people on this side uh, for a time of shared prayer of gratitude. Again, it's just a great way to not only end the service, but to, to go out into the world just being very thankful for all that God has given to us. So we invite you to join with her, and we thank you for that ministry. Um, Starting next Sunday, on the first Sunday of the month, we're going to be doing our food drive again. And so we would invite you, if you're able to, uh, to bring any non-perishable foods. Uh, we will keep some here uh, in case we have people who come asking for it. But then we'll also uh, do some support of all the other, uh, some of the other food banks in our area. So, um, you know, what we can't do, we can help other people do. So again, if you're able to do so, uh, we'll do that on the first Sunday of every month. Uh, so we ask you to go ahead and to, to bring them if you can. Um, uh, I'll give more information on this, but it, as the September comes to the end, uh, we will be probably in two weeks, we'll be having a parish council meeting, and then we'll also be starting the Thursday teachings. So I have to get a date for that, and we'll be doing some advertising. So uh, we're going to start, start getting back to business as usual here come September. So uh, can you think of anything else? Hmm? Oh, yeah, and uh, that's right. In two weeks, three weeks, uh, we'll be hosting the uh, clergy for the National Catholic, uh, Nas National Catholic Church of North America. We'll be hosting the clergy here. So we'll be doing our meeting uh, Thursday through Sunday, uh, and then we'll have all the clergy here for Mass on Sunday. So that would be a very festive occasion. So I uh, hope you'll all join us for that and um, pray for us. <laughs> we need it. Um, 
that as we come together, we, we're going to really start looking at, at where we stand on social justice and trying to make sure that our social justice comes not from a place of, you know, rules and regulations, but truly out of a place of love and care for God's people. So uh, it's going to be some interesting discussions for us. So uh, a different way of looking at social justice. So I'm excited about that. So um, we have coffee and we have uh, treats and we invite you to stay for that. And I think that is it. Please stand. And most of those cars are older than I am. No. The Lord is with you. May Almighty God continue to bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Be to God. Praise the one.